Here is a nice case. At first, when you look at this, you may not recognize it as being uh, diagnostic of any particular organ. You can see large blood vessels. You can see kind of a looser vascular tissue. And uh, nicely, you can see a very large piece of hyaline cartilage arranged in a rather semicircular kind of a configuration or arc-like configuration that has some folding here. And you can see some glands next to it, like perhaps a large bronchus. This is a large bronchus, so that makes this organ here perhaps a little bit of a compressed uh, hemorrhagic portion of lung. True, I don't see any classical uh, alveoli anywhere. I just see kind of loose uh, hemorrhagic tissue. I see scattered uh, nests of uh, inflammatory cells, lymphocytes here and here. But I can see uh, towards the inside of that piece of cartilage, we have a mucosa, which is pretty classical for a uh, bronchial mucosa. It is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with a loose uh, amount of connective tissue underneath it. Here's a nice little strip over here. Here is a piece of uh, perhaps smooth muscle, which might be uh, close to the bronchus. And can we find our piece of cartilage again? Sure we can, it's right here. But let's take a look at this really huge thing that's uh, inside of this large bronchus. It doesn't look like lung at all. In fact, it looks like uh, a tumor. It is a tumor. It doesn't have any uh, specific uh, tissue organization to make you think it's any particular type of organ or soft tissue. This is a tumor which uh, originates from the bronchus. Let's describe it. Well, uh, it looks in many areas, like especially around here, that uh, you have these little uh, cords of cells, perhaps in small little nests, perhaps in little clumps, and they're separated by uh, fibrous connective tissue from each other. You might call this uh, a so-called glomerular pattern because some people do. Or if you would rather just call them nests of tumor cells that have very minimal cytoplasm and small dark nuclei like many neuroendocrine cells do, then you can also call this kind of a neuroendocrine kind of a, a tumor. And it is. These cells, like the uh, small cells of small cell carcinoma, are neuroendocrine cells, and as you know, most neuroendocrine cells all have a common embryologic origin from neural crest. Let's go into another random area of the tumor, and perhaps we don't see as nice of a glomeruloid or little circular cluster pattern, but we do see small cells, minimal cytoplasm, very, very vascular. And at this point, do you say, uh, is this a malignant tumor? Well, let's think about this. Let's use a little bit of logic here. You can see, uh, for one, that it seems to be very well contained inside of the bronchus. Like you can see that it doesn't seem to be infiltrating uh, beyond the bronchus. So that's a feature for making it uh, um, benign. It doesn't appear to disrupt or push uh, through even the mucosa. This is a bronchial carcinoid. It is a neuroendocrine tumor. It can be malignant. Uh, most people would just prefer to call this carcinoid and not use the adjective benign or malignant in front of it because you never really know how it's going to behave. You can actually be better off just calling it a carcinoid, realizing it could be malignant, 
and describing its features and making your a value judgment from there. Like the oat cell carcinoma, it is derived from neuroendocrine cells and could it be thought of as a benign or perhaps even a precursor to an oat cell sort of a carcinoma? Well, perhaps you could call it that. Uh, when this uh, carcinoid shows a lot more atypical features, uh, you can uh, guess that it may look and even behave like an oat cell carcinoma and perhaps even respond to the same type of treatment and chemotherapy that an oat cell would because endocrinologically, there are, I'm sorry, embryologically, they're very similar types of cells. So let's review. This is compressed lung with a lot of vascular spaces. Here's bronchial epithelium. Here's big bronchial cartilage. Here's uh, bronchial glands underlying the epithelium. And then here's the tumor showing these little nests or tumorlets or uh, glomerular patterns, perhaps more peripherally and rather more undifferentiated centrally. You may never see this tumor in your life, but you're seeing it now. This is a bronchial carcinoid, and thank you very much.